Good morning. Uh, many years ago, when I was a student at the Memphis School of Preaching, uh, in my second year of studies, I had an invitation to uh, uh, to preach each weekend at a small congregation in the uh, area of Perryville, Arkansas. And, uh, of course, I was happy to do that, but what that meant is uh, it meant that we traveled uh, each weekend to Perryville so that I could preach, and then we'd go back on Sunday night so the classes could be begin again on Monday. And we had a really, really old minivan at that time. I mean, it had well over 100,000 miles or so on it. And uh, one particular day, as we were driving through Memphis uh, during rush hour, in, in, in fact, uh, headed to, uh, to, to Jonesboro for the weekend so that I could preach in Paragould, all of a sudden in this rush hour traffic, when we're just flying along, uh, the van started shaking and uh, I started losing speed. And it was like it was fighting with me. And I just couldn't get any, anything out, out of it. It just kept slowing down. And it seemed like it was several minutes. It probably wasn't nearly that long at all. But there were a lot of cars honking and people hollering and things like that. But finally, after just whatever length of time it was, it just everything just went back to normal. And so we started driving again, and, and everything was great. And, and I worried about it, but it was doing fine, so I didn't do anything about it. So then uh, as we were returning back on Sunday evening toward Memphis, again, we were just driving down the highway at a pretty good speed, and just all of a sudden it started shaking and uh, slowing down and, and fighting with me. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. And it finally let go and we started driving again. So I decided probably ought to get it in the shop and see what's going on. So uh, the dealership uh, hooked it up to their computer and there was a glitch, some kind of glitch that was happening in the computer system that was causing the van at random moments to, uh, to uh, apply the brakes. And so I would be driving along it. 60 65 miles an hour or whatever and the van would all of a sudden put the brakes on and that's why it would start shaking and fighting with me because i'm trying to give it gas and it's trying to slow down and the van just until we got that fixed you just couldn't travel in it it would just out of the blue uh for no apparent reason at all just slow down and even almost stop on the side of the road i thought about that and i thought that's the way some people try to live their christian life uh, it takes a faith, Romans ten seventeen, to uh, understand who God is and to have this desire to obey the gospel, but it doesn't stop there. It takes a continuation of staying in God's word and developing that faith to keep going. I think that many people live their Christian life like they've got the brakes on. They just, they just can't let go and, and, and live their life in full confidence in God. And I think that's what the Hebrews writer was talking about in Hebrews 12, in verse 1, when he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, that verse has some connecting words, which means it's, it's continuing a thought that was begun in chapter 11. And you know that the chapter breaks were added by the uh, publishers, the translators. It's... Uh, uh, that in the original writing, it was just a letter, and so you could understand the continuing thought. The idea that the author is trying to say here is, after, after listing off all of those people in Hebrews chapter 11 who walked by faith, you know, like Noah and Abraham and Sarah and so many others that are listed in that chapter that walk by faith, then he turns around to chapter 12 and says, now, what you have to recognize is sometimes your faithlessness is like dragging this weight with you. It's like applying the brakes when you're trying to, to drive down the highway of life. When you're trying to live Christianity by dragging your, your weight of sin, your faithlessness with you, you can never accomplish what you seek to accomplish. So the challenge I'm offering today is uh, for us to be people who truly have a confident faith in God, that I do believe that I can accomplish what God desires for me to accomplish if I only put myself uh, in a position where I fully trust him and I fully act on his behalf. Do the best that I can do to serve him in every way and trust that God's promises are always fulfilled. If I can get rid of the times of my weak faith, my faithlessness, then my Christianity will be much stronger and my service to God will be so much more apparent. I hope that that's uh, what we'll commit to do today. I'm going to decide today 
that I'm not going to drag that weight with me any longer. No, no struggle in my faith any longer. I'm going to keep growing. Now, I know, I know saying that is different than actually living it. There are going to be times I'm going to struggle just like you. But if I commit myself to becoming stronger today and every day following, then there'll be less times in my life where the brakes will be on. I hope that you have a great day.